The obsession with another couple in here, I feel like you took your eye off the real reason you're in here. These two have got something good. It's more involved with other couples and not letting stuff go and kind of just carrying it on when it's already been, it's been deaded. Joey is very stuck up and I'm happy that they all voted for him. Well, he got at least 65% of the votes. Um, people were being, they were fighting wars. <laughs> I will be here for the ex-islanders. The fact that Mimi and Josh didn't even get one single vote, they didn't even get one single negative comment. Instead, people were fighting their battle for them. I am here for. I am here for. And Mimi Defense League went after Ayo. And the fact that they were using the brothers' words to hide behind is just is hilarious. It's just hilarious. I really loved this. They need to do it. But then the thing is, if they do it every single year, then people are going to be fake nice. They need to sort of alternate. If they do it like they've done it now, then they go a couple of seasons without doing it. Then they bring it back again. That way people don't know when they're going to have to rely on their ex-islanders to sort of vote for them. Anyway, hey there, thanks for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos, and definitely leave a comment in this episode I'll be reviewing Love Island season 11, episode 48. I'm on pins and needles <laughs> because I have I had to wait an hour to watch because I don't get it live. Anyway, um, so you have the islanders waking up. There's still a bit of guilty conscience for some of them because they voted for people that they really love and they're not allowed to tell them. They're not allowed to explain what happened. So it's very antsy in the villa. Um, They all go and they sort of sit down and are having conversations. And you have Joey and Jesse with a Y busy telling each other that we have the strongest connection. Yes, we might get some votes, but we've got the strongest connection. And it's like, buddy, who are you parroting to? Who are you trying to reassure? Are you trying to convince the viewers or are you trying to convince one another? Because as far as I'm concerned, your connection is not strong. I feel like you are in this couple because you think this is the one that gives you the best chance of winning. Otherwise, you would have kept grace. Um, and then you have Sean and Matilda. They're, they're sort of on the daybeds with Mimi and Josh. And Matilda is sort of asking Sean, what do you like about me? Oh, I like your laugh. I like this. And it's like, Sean, you're just parroting what you know she wants to hear. That's all. You're just parroting what, oh, your laugh, I can hear it from 20 miles away. Seriously. Are you bionic man? Do you have bionic ears? Make it make sense. Um... I don't know. I really, Sean gets on my nerves. As far as I'm concerned, he gets on my nerves. Um, you have um, Mimi is asked the same question by Josh. And she said, you know, we ha we are very similar. And this is the same thing that somebody else said. Oh, it was Harry who said um, Mimi and Josh are more or less like the same person. They sort of mirror each other very well. And Mimi said, you know, I love how you take care of me. And this is something that Mimi's family even love about Josh. They love how he loves their daughter. They love how he's protective of their daughter. So her saying that is amazing because I think as viewers, these are some of the things that we've seen in Josh that we really love. The way he loves Mimi, the way he protects Mimi and will go to war and then come back late and ask, why did I go to war? Uh, the way, you know, he's very accommodating with her. So that was cute to see. Um, you have Kieran and Nicole obviously having a conversation about you know, their vote and the fact that they don't want to sort of fall out just because of who they voted for. Uh, because they were conflicted between Ayo and Jess and Mimi and Josh. And um, Kieran's argument was that, oh, well, Mimi only went to Josh because Ayo played up in Casa and recoupled with somebody else. And it's like, but still, even if she had recoupled with someone because Ayo moved on, is the new couple working is the question. It's not about whether or not she should have been with Ayo. Maybe if Ayo, she's already said it. I remember she said it when 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 she first met Josh, and she was being asked by um, Jesse OG, and Jesse asked her that. So do you think if Josh had come in Casa, your head would have been turned? And she said, "There's a strong possibility. There is a strong possibility because he's the type of guy that I would go to in the real world." So. It's nice that they've come to an agreement. It's nice that they've come to an understanding and they're sort of willing to move on from it because Kieran and Nicole are very hot-headed. 
and anything will just ignite them as long as so they need to learn how to communicate i think they need to go to couples counseling if their goal is to stay together they need to go to couples counseling and learn to communicate they need to learn to listen to understand and then respond their problem is they listen to respond which means that they don't have enough time to sort of process the information they've heard um maya jama then arrives and she asks them to stand by the lawn and reveals who people voted for I personally feel because as they were going through and Mimi found out that, you know, Matilda and Sean voted for her. She was like, wow. And just said, I told you. So I think Mimi refused to vote for Matilda and Sean because she was saying they would never vote for us. So to find out that they voted for her was devastating because they're close friends. They're very close friends. And it's a it's surprising that everybody's kicking off about Mimi voting for Josh and Ayo. Uh, what is nobody saying anything about Kieran and Nicole voting for them? Because Kieran is close friends with Ayo. He's known Ayo longer than he's known Josh. So make it make sense. I feel like Kieran's allegiance is to Mimi, although he likes Ayo. And so this is why he was more inclined to agree with Nicole's decision. Because we all know Nicole is the one who rode hard for that decision to be made. Anyway, um... You, Sean, is devastated when he finds out that his big bro voted for him. <laughs> and he's like, big bro, <laughs> big bro doesn't say anything. And it's like, Joey voted for Sean because he wanted a fall guy. He thought if he brings Sean into this mess, then people will hate Sean more than they hate him. And so are likely to send Sean home. I think that was a strategic vote. And it's sad that, you know, Sean is finding out the truth about his big brother, that his big brother will sort of throw him to the wolves and sort of leave him hanging. And this is what's going to, it's just a revelation of what's going to happen when they get to the real world and they find out the mess they're in because of the allegations of racism against Mimi and Josh. This is savage and this is a teachable moment because these islanders, especially to start, the girls were terrible. Mimi and Harriet and Patsy were on the outskirts. At least Patsy could dabble in between the two teams, whereas Mimi and Harriet were left on their own in the wind. And this is a teachable moment because if you're horrible to people, karma is coming for you. Karma is coming for you. Anyway, so to start off, uh, Patsy is the first person to go. And Patsy immediately calls out Joey and Jesse and says, Joey is a game player. He's here to play the game. He seems more interested in the game than anything else. I said this in my prediction in the sense that Joey came in. He was with Samantha and then realized that Samantha was giving stalker vibes and immediately dumped her for Grace. And then when he was with Grace and saw the backlash from some of the other islanders, this is when he switched over and went to Jesse with a Y because he thought that was a neutral party and this is exactly what Pat's is saying that he's a game player he's a game player and he's thinking about the end results and it's like you've got money what do you need 50k for what do you really need 50k for this was a bad career move on joey essex part next is hugo hugo said the same thing and said he's moved from girl to girl to girl and had lola come in earlier than she did he would have given it a go but because it was so close to the end this is why he didn't he's refusing no i didn't you were flirting with her. You told her you were available. You really wanted her to pick you. So please keep quiet. Why not just take it like a man and keep quiet and just not argue? I don't get why Joey feels the need to sort of comment and say anything. And you can see the look on Samantha's face. She is enjoying people dragging Joey for filth. She is here and is patiently waiting her turn. These people are on smoke. Next is Harriet. Harriet, we all know, is Mimi's friend. And Harriet is going to ride until the wheels fall off. So she stood up and she said she was nominating Ayo and Jess. Just because Ayo might still have feelings for Mimi. And also his family members said the same thing. And this doesn't sit very well with Josh. Josh doesn't like to hear this. Josh doesn't like to hear this. I'm happy that Ayo was able to say, no, I am with Jessica. And that's it. I'm not with Mimi, I've moved on from Mimi. My brother's entitled to his opinion. The problem comes now because Josh didn't tell Mimi when he found out. And I don't know how she is going to feel about it. I don't, I hope, I hope, I hope they don't have an issue about it. And if they do, I hope they wait until after the show and they address it at home. He will tell her the truth that, you know, who was I? It wasn't my place to tell you. And after all, I am happy with you. This has nothing to do with us. If they, the family, had something to say, they should have said it to you. They didn't say it to you. I didn't feel it was my place to say anything. I think Harriet said it just to rub salt into Ayo. Just to rub salt into Ayo. She couldn't say, I'm voting you out because of how you played my friend. But she looked for something to say that made sense, which I'm here for. Uh, Omar, Omar stood up. Omar 
had beef. He's already spoken about this on social media. The fact that Sean had him sent home so that he could have a chance with Matilda. I'm here for him speaking his truth. He needed to air that out. And I'm here for it. I can't wait for it to be readdressed or rehashed at the reunion. Sean is saying, oh, well, it's worked out, but that was in my best interest. I know I made that decision. And it's like, it's a coward decision. I wouldn't brag about it. You were being a coward. And for Matilda to sort of back him on that, that's just being silly. That's just being silly. And, you know, she should have apologized. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that that's what happened until after the fact. Anyway, I feel my connection with Sean was stronger. So either way, had the two of you stayed, this is what I would have chosen. But then she can't say that because I don't think this connection with Sean is genuine. And there's a possibility that once the show ends, they might push it for a couple of months, maybe do the Sam and whatever from last season act and then eventually separate. I don't see that lasting long term. Next is Uma. Uma is the one who was consoling Mimi when Mimi was crying. She's the one who came out to bring Mimi into the ladies' changing room when Mimi was sitting on the day beds crying. She's the one who stood there and lifted Mimi when Mimi was, sta sta was crouching outside the door, the main door, because she was devastated. And so she's the one who went on the date with Mimi when Mimi met Josh. So she was always going to ride or die as bad boys say and so her voting for Io and and Jess was no was nothing new I was expecting it and was just waiting for her to say it out loud yes her excuse to some extent it makes sense that she said you know Io Io is still growing is still learning his emotional intelligence is developing and has developed quite a lot since he's entered the villa he's always seemed to be about himself and always prioritized himself even when Mimi was crying he never had the empathy to sort of go and console her or even say are you okay up until she coupled up with Josh that's when he started to think oh me oh me what happened to me and so for Uma, to say that when you told her about your brother's comments, you didn't come across as very caring. And that's the excuse that people are holding on to. The comments by the brother. People are not saying you did this to Mimi, but instead are holding on to that comment and are using it to bash him over the head with it. Because if they start saying, oh, Mimi, you did this to Mimi, then it will seem like they're being vengeful. But instead, they're using it in a hidden sort of way that's just, oh, chef's kiss. Uh, next up is Mimi's brother. We know Ron. Ronnie loves Mimi to death. When when Ayo, I think, recoupled with, with Uma or when Ayo was taken for a date, I remember everybody was running around and sort of, Mimi, are you okay? Mimi, are you okay? Mimi, are you okay? And then eventually, Kieran had to get people to move away and left Mimi with Ronnie. And Ronnie said to her, what do you want me to do? What do you want us to do? And she said, I just want people to leave me alone. And he said, okay, fine, let's move. Let's. So he's always been protective of Mimi. He was one of the people that were championing Mimi to, 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 to Ayo, telling him, this is an amazing girl. Kieran, this is an amazing girl. Even Joey Essex, this is an amazing girl. And Ayo didn't see this. So to think that he would ever vote for Mimi is, is a joke. To think that would ever vote for Mimi is a joke. Instead, he came and he laid the law into Sean and I was here and I was cheering and I was so excited because he said, you know, you came here for love, but it seems you're obsessed with another couple. Why are Why is it? Yes, Maya brought in Jesse and Ayo, but he was mainly talking about Mimi and Josh because those were Sean's targets. Those were the people he was beating over the head every single time. So for him to stand on business, Ronnie, and say, you are here for love. You shouldn't be focused on another couple. You shouldn't be obsessed. And he's actually called it an obsession because that is what it is. It's an obsession. The way he kept repeating and repeating about Josh, about Josh and Mimi, I'm here for it. As soon as he started speaking and he said that Mimi knew that brother is here, Big Brother is here and he's going to handle it. And for Josh, I think Josh is realizing that he won the lottery because everybody seems... To, he, he knows who's Team Mimi because of the comments that they are making. He actually knows that this is Team Mimi. I think when they get to the end and he realizes, or if he gets a chance to speak to them, he's going to realize that he won the lottery. Whether or not they win the show, he is the richest man walking in Love Island because he got what everybody else wanted and couldn't get. And I'm here for only telling, you know, Matilda that you're just with Sean just to be on the show. Once the show ends, that's it. And for her to say, oh, you only saw me date one person. And he said, I love you. You know, I love you. But this ain't it. And it ain't it. Because how can you be with someone who's very derogatory, defamatory, disrespectful to people and think that he's going to shower you with love and kindness? Make that make sense.
Make that make sense. She knows it. She doesn't want to accept it, but she knows it that there's a clock on her and Sean's relationship and very soon the time will run out. The god of Mimi that she and Josh are praying to before they make out in bed is powerful. Is powerful. Because the the angels are doing their work down here. Oh my god. Next up is Sam. Sam decides to pick Joey and Jesse. And he sort of talks about the relationship, the connection. The fact that Joey has moved from partner to partner and then he brings up the secret mission and he talks, well, he doesn't name it a secret mission, but he says you keep hacking at hacking at other couples and making them doubt their connection. It's unacceptable. And he's, oh, Joey's like, oh, you're trying to take revenge. And it's like, nah, I am just expressing my opinion from what I have seen. The way you've treated your partner and the way you've treated other couples and made them question their connection your communication is bad. You need to go home. And Joyce, well, you are upset just because I sent you home after 24 hours. And Sam is like, no, it's not personal. There's nothing personal about this. And this is what I like when people stand on business. Because everybody that's calling these people out is aligned to me is aligned to Mimi and people saw Mimi go through some of the worst times because of these idiots. And so she doesn't need to say anything. Josh doesn't need to defend her anymore because the ex Islanders are doing their work. And oh my God, I'm here for it. This is when you know someone is loved. This is when you know someone is loved and you question why. You question why? Because I kept saying the producers are trying to paint Mimi in a bad light and someone was attacking me in the comments saying, how dare you, you are just, it's not the edit. Well, if it's not the edit, why is it so far nobody has voted towards Mimi or Josh? Why? Why is it people are defending Mimi and Josh? Why is it people are going after those people that have caused Mimi and Josh grief? Because you have Sean with the way he kept attacking them about the great situation. You have Joey with the way he kept on going about the secret mission. And you have Ayo who made a cry. Make that make sense. I know Kieran and Nicole are not vulnerable, but still... Anyway, next up is Jessie. And Jessie was there. She was one of the people who was actually consoling Mimi as she was crying. So for her to stand up and, you know, they're using code. They're talking about reassurance, but it's not really about reassurance, in my opinion. They are fighting Mimi's battle. They are fighting Mimi's battle. That the audacity. And this is a teachable moment for Ayo. If I were him, I would go home and look at myself and ask, what is it? that people are saying I am not giving to my partner. Yes, I like the fact that Jess, when I was saying, I've reassured her every single time, and she's saying, you shouldn't need to reassure her every single time. She should feel confident and comfortable enough to be reassured without you needing to reassure her. This is not the first person to bring it up. His brother even brought it up that she needs a lot of reassurance. Because if she needs so much reassurance in the villa where it's sort of contained and there aren't that many people, imagine in the real world, she'll be phoning him every two, three minutes. And they won't last because of that. So I'm here for, for you for just saying it. And what do they do? Nothing. They have to take it on the chin and keep it moving. I'm here. I'm here. As soon, next up is Ruben. We all know Ruben is Team Joby captain. So he is never going to nominate them. His dad is going to be a member of the Defense League, but he's decided not to let his hand show. Instead, he's decided to go after, you know, Joey. <laughs> I think because, well, he's defending them in the sense that he's sending Joey home. Because how dare Joey have the audacity to make his friend cry and belittle him and be derogatory and question his relationship. I'm here. I mean, the smiles, the little smiles that went on Mimi and Josh's face as soon as Ruben stood up. And he said his peace. I love how these people are PC. They are looking for excuses, but we all know they hate the guts of the people that they are nominating. They hate them like crap. So he talks about the fact that, you know, Joey lives a very busy lifestyle and Jesse might not be able to keep up with the lifestyle. And it's like, yeah, that's the truth, though. Joey doesn't even know whether he lives in a town or a city. I don't know how he can find time to find where Jesse lives. And for Jesse to be, oh, that's just a cop out, you know, that's not a good enough excuse. Oh, please sit down. And for Joey to say, Ruben is jealous of me. You've always wanted everything I've had. And it's like, seriously. So you think grace is a prize? Seriously. You think grace is a prize? Make it make sense? Just take your lemons and go and make lemonade quietly. There's no need for you to have a back and forth with someone and try and belittle them and be derogatory. I'm here. For the fact that he now Joey now has four votes. 
I'm here for that. Because the audacity to want to patronize people and to think people are going to be afraid of him because he's a cele celebrity doesn't make sense. And they're all dressing him down to filth and I'm here and I'm cheering. Next up is Will. Will is on Redemption Tour. Will is trying to win his girl over. So whatever his girl wants is what he's going to go with. And he used the same excuse about Ayo's brother. Everybody who's voting for Ayo is using this brother as an excuse. It's only Jess who talked about reassurance. Everybody else. And I, I well, I am comfortable with Jess. Please continue in your connection and continue going left. Leave Mimi and Josh alone. Because her brother has already told you they have something good. Allow them to nurture their something good with Jomi and keep it moving. Because it's sad, but it's hilarious. It's hilarious that the people that were causing Mimi grief, today it's now time to pay the, you know, it's, ti it's time to pay the piper. Because everybody's being dressed down for filth. And Jess is just smiling. And it's like, it's sad, but they're telling the truth. Yes, Ayo is trying to dispute that, but... His brother should never have said anything negative about Jess on TV. He should have waited until they got home. But he wanted this TV moment. And now people are using the TV moment to whack his young brother over the head with it. I blame his brother. Karma is a B. Karma is a B. Because Joey was dragging to the extent that a grown man like Josh was crying and had to be consoled by Mimi because he was that upset. Because Joey kept picking and picking and picking and then he would come and say sorry and sort of smooth it over and then he would come back and pick and pick and pick and karma today has come a calling. It has come a calling because Samantha is the next one up and she talks about, she, we knew she was seething. She wouldn't even allow Joey to say goodbye to her on the day that she left. So there was no way she was not going to vote for him. And for him to say, we were in a friendship couple. And she's like, you should have told me for two weeks, you had me in a couple. We went on a romantic date. You should have told me that we're, well, there's nothing romantic that way I could have you know, tried it for somebody else. But no, you let me sit there and wait and wait and wait until you found your person and then you moved on. Karma is a calling and I'm happy that she was able to speak her truth. I think in this situation, it makes sense that they brought them also that they could all speak their truth because Joey has done a lot of things. And let this be a teachable moment for all these people. Because if ex-islanders are saying all these nasty things about you or are calling you out for all these bad behaviors. You can just imagine what the, the rest of the public is thinking. This is a teachable moment and sadly Joey is failing. Instead of apologizing, he's trying to rationalize his behavior. Next up is Manver. Manver just picks Joey and Jesse. He says because of the way you behave. He really didn't have much to say because he really didn't spend as much time with Joey. Oh, Joey didn't like that. And then lastly is Grace to put the final nail in the coffin. And I'm here for Grace. One thing about Grace is she's going to speak her truth. I was actually afraid that she was going to nominate Mimi and uh, Josh just out of spite. But I think because she's with Ruben and she knows how much Ruben values them, this is why she's decided to take out her vengeance. And she spoke the truth because she said Joey involves himself in other people's business when he shouldn't have to. And Jesse is no better because she's busy rationalizing whatever he says instead of trying to sort of mind her own business or get him to apologize she sits there and tries to rationalize every single thing and it's like i thought you were best friends what's happened friendy what's happened when you were cheering each other on to go after josh what happened i'm here for this and i'm here and this is what i said last time that i saw it on social media that when a woman gets angry even the devil takes nose and Joey, someone should have shown him this meme because it has come home to roost. Grace and Samantha dragged him fulfilled. And if I were Jesse, I would ask myself questions. Do I really want to be in a relationship whereby someone is derogatory, um, disrespectful, defamatory, um, sort of loathful toward, sort of, I don't even know what word to use towards the people that he's dated. If he can't treat the people he's dated that badly, even after Jesse's mother warned him to be nice to Grace, I don't get why she should want to be with him. I think it's time for her to move on. And the reality has dawned on Joey that it's time for him to go home. I don't know whether this was his agreement with ITV or whatever, but it's time for him to go home. It's a pity they didn't ask him to take his little brother with him. I'm trying not to cry or laugh. Anyway, Joey realizes that the gig is up. I don't know whether Joey decided to fall on the sword for Sean. I think this is what has happened. And sadly, Sean is now putting this, you know, the blade through Joey's heart. Uh, because 
Jesse still doesn't comprehend what people are saying. Oh, you know, people didn't vote for us because we're not compatible. People are taking out their grievances on Joey. And it's like, did you ever listen? Did you ever listen to understand or were you just standing there and just watching and thinking, oh, they hate Joey, they hate Joey. I have nothing to do with this. This is the one of the reasons why people voted against you because people didn't like the fact that you don't question him. You're always backing every single thing he says. So she and Joey left. Joey said, you know, well, before they left, Joey had a conversation with Sean and sort of explained to him why he voted for them. He said, I assumed people were going to vote for you and us. So I just assumed, let me vote for you as well. And it's like, oh, make it make sense. Um, once they have left, the islanders get ready. They're reminiscing on the fact that Joey and, you know, Jesse have left. Um, and then you have sort of Ayo and Jess with Matilda and Sean sit by the fire pit. And Sean has the audacity to take a whole man like Joey and throw him in the middle of the fire pit. That's my, that's the only analogy I could think of. Because he says, you know, I now realize that I went along with certain things that I didn't agree with and I backed him. And yet he nominated me. He they all agree he was a game player and it's like seriously do you all believe this nonsense coming out of Sean's mouth why are you Ayo and Jess sitting and entertaining this nonsense why why do you feel that this is the truth he is lying to your faces what is more or less saying to you is that everything I did it wasn't my fault Joe is the one who was coaching me and was pushing me to do it so don't blame me. I don't agree with everything that I did but I had to do it because I was trying to back Joey that's a lie that's a lie that's a lie, Your Honor. How dare he? Um, yes, they gave each other reasons for nominating each other. Uh, I don't know why they're even entertaining each other. Unless the producers ask them to sort of try and be cohesive. Or unless they see this as a way to sort of revamp their characters and sort of get themselves to, to be in the top three. I don't even know why. I wish... Ayo and Jess would be in the top three with Mimi and Josh and Kieran and, and Nicole Sean doesn't need to be rewarded for everything he's said and done. And he cannot sort of cleanse himself just because Joey's left. He doesn't realize that Joey has a PR machine behind him. And as soon as the PR machine hears everything he's saying, they're going to sit down with Joey and they're going to strategize and they're going to drag him through the mud. If he thought that the viewers were dragging him, I can only imagine what will happen to him after Joey's publicist and PR team are finished with him. So you have Mimi and Josh having a conversation, obviously, they do feel bad that they had to nominate people that they're friends with. Obviously, they feel bad about the... I think they had a conversation with Ayo and Jess. There's no way they would not have had a conversation. But the producers won't show us because they want it to continue to be messy. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Anyone can argue, <laughs> uh, but that's my opinion. Because why would they not say anything? Because at one point, you actually have... um. Because Kieran has a conversation with Nicole and Nicole is saying to him, you need to go and speak to Ayo and explain to him why we voted for them. Um, and if you want, you can throw me under the bus because I argued for Mimi and Josh. And so Kieran goes to have a conversation with Ayo because he knows that Ayo is upset and they're boys. And so you see Nicole having a conversation with Josh and she's sort of explaining how they ca came to their decision uh, because it was between Josh and Ayo. Um... I still want to maintain that Josh and Mimi had a conversation with Jesse and Ayo, but it wasn't shown because the producers want to split the vote. They don't want one person to win. Uh, that's my opinion. So you have Kieran explain himself and Ayo, Ayo doesn't seem like a man who holds a grudge. You might disagree with something, but it doesn't seem like a man who holds a grudge. He was understanding. He was told that the reason why we chose you was because Josh had the opportunity to sort of pursue a connection with somebody else, but he refused. We all heard him say categorically, there is no feeling between me and Grace. And so that shows that he came in wanting someone. Even Ayo knows that, that Josh came in wanting Mimi and that's the person he pursued. So he was able to accept the apology. Josh told Mimi, we just need to focus on one another. They... I don't think Josh is really worried about the win. I think Josh came in wanting Mimi and seeing Mimi and realizing that she is that amazing and things like people not even casting one single vote or saying anything negative about her just confirms to him that he's already won. He doesn't need any money. He can go home and make money. He doesn't need the 50K because it won't last him long. Um, I love them. So you have Matilda sitting in the kitchen with Jesse and Nicole, and then they receive a text message to say that they've reached the final. Everyone is ecstatic. The fact that Josh was running around with Mimi is just hilarious. 
it was just so cute to see them all so relaxed. They all deserve to be in the final. Bar Sean, I wish Sean had gone home. I would rather even Ruben and Grace had stayed because Sean didn't deserve to be in the in the in the final. I'm sorry. I hope he's the first person eliminated. I hope he's number four, and then we can have Ayo and Jess be number three, and then hopefully Mimi and Josh make history. That's what I'm hoping for. For the first time in Love Island history, I've, I've voted. Um, I love the fact that people were running to go to the beds and Josh was competing with Mimi. How dare he make her run in her heels? She's so cute. I love their love. I love the fact that her brother recognized that they, is something very, they have something very good. And he was warning people that leave them the hell alone. Otherwise, you know, Turbo is coming. Uh, it was really cute. They all got ready for bed. The girls were celebrating because there's only two OG girls left and there's three OG guys left, which was cute because Manuve and uh, Sam were eliminated day one. Uh, well, within the first week or two. So it's really cute that they're all there to celebrate and be happy. Um, they were making out in bed, which is usual. I don't know why these people can't wait another 24, 48 hours before they leave the villa and they can do whatever they want. But hey, it is what it is. Thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 47. Bye guys.